All right. I was going to fit the crank to the connecting rod here today, but uh, and I still might. But uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I think I'm going to try and uh, get these uh, few parts here painted because it's so nice out. It's like 85 degrees, no wind, and uh, beautiful day, you know, and they're expecting rain for the next couple days, so I think I might do that. I'm not going to put you through the paint and watching all that, get painted and stuff. Uh, the next step you'll see is uh, we'll be fitting this. So let me get these uh, cleaned up and uh, degreased and then uh, paint them up. All right, sorry about that. I didn't think it was going to take as long as it did. But uh, there was a lot of tape in Chris's part here alone. You know, you don't want to you don't want to paint the machine surfaces, you know, where everything's going to match up. So this this piece alone had to get taped up a lot. This one here's another one that had to get all taped. This is the only one I didn't have to tape. You know, the little guy here had to tape that up. Tape both sides of this. Same with this. Mask up both sides of that. Oh, this one here didn't have to mask that, but uh, and this here. I had to mask both sides of that, so, and then clean it all with uh, lacquer thinner before I sprayed it. So it, it took a little longer than I thought. Plus, I had to prime it, and then uh, we got three colors here. You got regular black, and then uh, this here. Uh, I'm sure somebody's going to ask. That's that's hunter green, dark hunter green, rustoleum. That's probably the closest thing you can come to uh, the old Maytag color. It looks a little different here under the lights. Outside looks pretty, uh, pretty good. There's almost a bluish hue to that in here, but. Uh, that's some LEDs and uh, the muffler there that was uh, that was a special uh, 2000 degrees I think that muffler only gets about 500 but uh, probably not even that but anyway you don't have to worry about that peeling but let's get to uh, the task at hand here alright I made some observations of this it's uh, pretty interesting so uh, let me throw you up on a tripod for a second and then uh, I'll explain to you what's going on here. Alright, let me point out a few things first before we start. Anytime you deal with connecting rods, uh, there's usually an indexing mark, you know, or if it's not factory then, then somebody would have made it. And uh, on this one, I almost lost it, but anyway, let me see if I can get a close up here. That's what this, this mark is here. Here we go, here you go. That's uh, an indexing mark. I don't know if that's factory or not. I, I would, I would uh, s probably say it is factory, you know. You don't want to mix it up with the, these marks here because they're, uh, they're casting marks. But this one here is an indexing mark. And it looks like somebody might have taken this apart before because they actually put a, there's a, a little dimple here yeah, I don't know how well you guys can see what I'm pointing out because I'm looking at a little screen, a one and a one and a quarter by two and a quarter screen that's uh, about four foot away. But anyway, somebody looks like they put a, a indexing mark there, just a little, you know, a little poke in there, just so uh, they knew which side was up. But anyway, always look for that when you take these uh, any connecting rod apart. But uh, let me take this apart and show you what I noticed before we get going. Okay, if you remember when it was on a crankshaft it was sloppy and everything. And it's funny because on here, if you look, you can actually see where it was actually hitting. It was only, the connecting rod was only hitting on this little section here. The rest of it, I guess it's all carbon or something or just, you know, it's, it don't feel like carbon but uh, I guess it is. It's just blackened but you can see it was just, just hitting on the very center. Now this part is another story. Looks like the whole thing was hitting pretty good. And if you get the crankshaft and put it on there, you could actually feel how tight it is. There's really no play. But if you get this part, stick it on there. You know, you got all kinds of wibble and wobble and stuff. So, I'll tell you what happened there. Actually, in the manual, it tells you, you know, like when, when it gets worn and stuff like that, to file down the end cap here. And, and when you do that, you just put it on a file. Matter of fact, I got a couple files here. This one's quite aggressive, and this one here isn't. 
And then what you're supposed to do is uh, just run it back on here. Matter of fact, the, the wider your file, this one here is wide, that'll fit there nice. And this one, I'll see if I can find a wider file. But anyway, and then you just file it down and keep it flat and keep checking on your crankshaft until you get a nice uh, tight fit. But then it also tells you, once you get a tight fit, to ream it out. And chances are, anybody rebuilding a motor like this on a farm or anywhere isn't going to have a ream. Especially back in the, the 20s, 30s, 40s and everything. You know, it's just, it's just not common. Even nowadays, you know, how many, how many of you guys out there have a 7 8 ream? Other than somebody that does uh, machine work. But anyway, that's, uh, that's what happened here. Somebody had filed it down and never reamed it so that would make this whole thing egg shaped so when you put it on here it's only riding on that little little center piece there so let me uh, let me get the manual and I'll actually show you what it says okay this is an actual page out of the, the Maytag uh, service manual for this engine let me zoom in not zoom in but I'll, I'll macro in there and you can actually read that and and pause it but if you see that it says if worn you know file the face of the cap bolt it together and ream it with a 7 8 reamer and uh, like I say nobody nobody has a, a 7 8 reamer just laying around but you know what's cool about this uh, it actually gives you the, the part number here an S uh, 235 and that's what was cool about Maytag let me see if I can find it there you go this way Yeah, S235. There you go, that's a little better, huh? But anyway, that's what's good about Maytag. Maytag put a part number, actually uh, cast a part number in every single part. Except that one. No, that's actually... There actually is one in there. Red King's just kidding. It's just barely... Barely visible. Every single part. You probably can't see it because of the glare. But uh, even this one. And even this one, like if, if they had machine part and everything, they would actually stamp it in. But uh, you, you hardly ever see that on any, any kind of machinery where they actually die cast it into the part, you know. Usually I just have a manual or something. But anyway, I was at an auction one day and uh, I picked this box up. I, I forgot what I paid for it. Might might have been as high as fifty dollars, but uh, it's all full of rings, all different sizes and everything. And I I cleaned them all and uh, and labeled them and stuff. And I actually have a seven eighths ring. But uh, let me throw you back in the tripod and I'll show you this. something wrong here. Okay. And there's a whole box of reams. I think there's probably 45 uh, reams in there. Some of them are brand new, and some of them are in good shape, and some of them are worn. And uh, the problem we have is the one I need the most and uh, always use, the 7 8 here, is worn. You see this? You can, I can take this and spin this in my hand, and you can hear it, and uh, that's how badly worn it is. So we'll do the best we can. You see, if that was sharp, that would have tore the shit out. That would have shredded me to pieces but anyway we'll do the best we can with it and uh, maybe maybe it'll work maybe it won't maybe we'll have to buy another connecting rod but if anybody has a 7 8 uh, ream a spare one it's in good shape sharp and everything and you want to donate it to the cause we're in dire need of one just PM me okay now get back to this alright you see how easy that went in there that's, that's way too easy and then when you get it in there Try and hold this steady here. There you go. Look at all that play. Sideways it ain't bad at all, but uh, up and down where it's egg shaped is pretty bad. So let me see if I got another file. Like I say, this one's good, but uh, this one here is a, a little skinnier. So uh, let me see if I can find a, a wider file. All right. What I'm going to do now is uh, this. This file here is actually okay. You know, because it's uh, perfectly the right size of that. Just have to stay up here. Down here, it's uh, a little smaller, but up here, it's perfect. 
So now what I'm going to do is uh, I'm just going to run this back and forth and cut it down. What I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to count and uh, this is pretty pretty aggressive. So I'm, I'm just going to go. Uh, I'm going to do it 20 times and then we'll see what it looks like. So, I already lost count, so let me look at it. Okay, you can see how shiny it is there, and uh, how smooth it is. Like a, it's, it's like a, a machine finish because you know you're keeping it level. Okay, I don't know if I mentioned it, but we have an oil groove down here, and when we ream it out, I I don't want to take too much of that oil groove away, but then. You also have oil grooves on the side here, so uh, you can you can uh, fix them up a little bit. But uh, I don't want to take too much meat off of this. If if it gets down when I ream it, if it gets down uh, too far into that oil groove, I might have to uh, go into this side here. I didn't want to mess with this side, but uh, if we have to, we have to, right? All right. But uh, just from the looks of that, I could tell we hardly took anything off, so we're gonna keep going. I'm gonna keep going until I uh, get rid of that little black mark there, and then we'll, uh, we'll start counting for good. All right, I'm gonna shut these off for now. Okay, I, I started counting everything, and then uh, I just wanted to get rid of this little black spot that was up here. And it's, it's just a, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but just a tiny little black spot left. But uh, I figured before we go too far, let's put it together and uh, make sure our index is my on our side. And uh, let's see, let's see how much more we got to go. You know, this is a, a slow, tedious process. You know, and you can't, you can't really rush this. Okay. Sometimes I may come out of the frame just to, like tighten stuff. I don't mean to do that. I don't mean to do that on you guys. Okay. Now we'll take the ream and see how it fits. Okay. All right, that's a good sign. The ream won't go in there. These things are tapered right here at the, on a on a tip, ever so slightly. So we can get the ream in there, but it won't go all the way in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in a vise, and uh, we're going to ream that out, and that should tell us exactly how much. All right, see I'm out of frame. I told you I'd be out of frame. That'll tell us exactly how much. I'm not even going to uh, put any uh, die cam on there, that blue stuff, because that's what you want to do. I'm not going to do that only because, well, maybe I'll, maybe I'll put a little magic marker. I think I'll do that just for fun, because this is already blackened. That would that would tell us what's getting cut. All right, let me get, let me get a marker. All right, what I'm doing here is uh, I'm just uh, coloring this in here. So when we cut it, we'll know exactly what's going on. So, let me finish coloring this in, and then uh, I'll meet you over at the vise. Alright, I got these in the vise here. I had to put a couple spaces in there because with the piston, I didn't have enough room to close the jaws, but uh, don't worry about that. Don't let that uh, red tape bother you. Alright, I checked to see uh, what kind of uh, cutting oil you're supposed to use for brass. And for reaming, they say ream it dry. For drilling, I think they say kerosene or lard. And uh, a couple guys said tap magic, so I'm using uh, I'm using this tap magic here, you know, just to make it a little easier for me to turn that bitch in there. But it's uh, really uh, not giving me too much trouble. It would be ideal if I had a, a bridge port or a, a milling machine or something to put this in and straighten it, but uh, it's going in pretty straight. And I got it on a ratchet here. With reams, you're only supposed to go in one direction. 
so uh, the ratchet's actually helping me. And it is taking some material off, I can feel it. Nope. Sorry for the dead air. Well, you guys can see that, but uh, let me. Uh, hey, I guess actually I can see some brass here on the other side. Uh, let me continue doing this, and then uh, we'll turn these back on. Okay, I took this off the tripod, so you can actually see it is. It is taking some material off, plus uh, the black there. So uh, it is working. I'm gonna I'm gonna send that thing all the way through. It's only about another. Uh, two inches. I'm going to send it all the way through and then we'll open it up and see what it looks like. Okay, you can see from uh, the ream here it uh, took off a good bit. Surprising. But uh, let me zoom you in and then we'll take that apart. <clears throat> Hold on. Alright, move it up a little bit. Hold on. Come on, Road King. Alright. You guys still there? We're looking at this together. Oh, shoot. Shoot. Drop my wrench. Let's see if I got another one here. Here we go. We got another one. Got another one right here. That's why I always have two sets of wrenches. I uh, one falls out of my hand and lands somewhere I can't find it. Okay. Can't wait. Can't wait to see. Okay. Is there? Huh. Okay, so here's the bottom one. The bottom one looks good. There is a wow, that's nice. There is a little bit uh, on the side there, but I think we're gonna have to take a little more cut anyway. Very, yeah. Can you see that? We almost got it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna file this down just a little bit more. Even now, that would that would work pretty good. But uh, you see where the black is, and I think if we file this down just a little bit more. We'll be good to go. All right, let me file some, and then we'll uh, come back on, come back up here on the vice. Okay, I blackened up the inside here again, and uh, okay, just make sure it was the right side. It should fall on, but uh, okay. I think I'm gonna ream this one dry because uh, when I looped up the other one, it took a little bit of the magic marker off, and I wasn't, I couldn't really see uh, what was taken off and what wasn't, other than where the carbon was. So uh, we're gonna ream this one dry. All right. Okay. That felt pretty good. So uh, let's see what it looks like. I should mention, you know, a couple of, I got a couple questions on what were the Maytags used for? And they were uh, washing machines, just like the same ones uh, that they use today. So back in the day when they didn't have electricity, you know, on the outskirts of the city and in the farms and the, the mountains and stuff, that's what they used. I'm liking the way they're looking. I mean, not 100% not perfect, but uh, I think it'll work. So that's what it was. They were washing machines. They did make lawn mowers out of them. And uh, little tiny electric plants. Okay. Looks pretty good. Let's tighten her up and see what it looks like.
Okay, now there isn't any lube on there, so we'll... Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, that thing, man, uh, that's a perfect fit there. Like I said, put a little oil in there and it'll loosen it right up. Okay. All right, now what I want to do is uh, clean up the oil uh, journals on the side there, because when, when we made this smaller, they actually got a little bit smaller. I didn't want to cut this down too much because uh, the bottom, the bottom journal, oil journal, where you at? The bottom, I want to make sure there was plenty of uh, room for the oil to go through and stuff. So, what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to take a file and just uh, file the edges down here on both of these over here. I'm not filing, I'm just showing you what I'm going to do. And then these here. And then we'll put a little lubricant on there and uh, put them back together and see how it uh, spins. Alright. Yeah, we're happy with that. We're, ha we're happy with that. And uh, it's been real nice, quiet. You hear this, this is what you hear the piston, but uh, there's virtually no play in there. And uh, I think. Uh, be, be good. It's about as good as we can get with a worn out uh, ream. But uh, we're happy with it. Much better than it was. So I guess that'll be it. We'll see you guys in the next one. Alright? Enough of this.